It's Heart Standard. I'm Craig Cairns. That's Joel Sked. And we have just watched the third game in eight days uh, Hearts have played. Still unbeaten. This one was a draw. What were your thoughts overall there, Joel? Um, I probably kind of just steal something that Neil Critchley said and it's probably mixed emotions. I thought there were ultimately disappointing or frustrated, disappointment or frustration that Hearts didn't come away with a win. Not, not in terms of how the game panned out because as the game panned out very happy with the draw but mm -hmm. as the game pie, like going in and seeing how I thought poor Hibs were I mean Hearts were poor let, let's, let, 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 let's, let's face that but Hibs were really poor they were really fragile they were really uh, you could see they were, they were a team lacking in confidence and you've seen that with the way they uh, we started um, where Hearts dominated the ball had so much of, uh, possession but didn't really do too much with it and then Hibs just seemed quite nervous both in and out of possession especially with the ball that there was a lot of times where they just thumped it clear mm -hmm. and this went on in the second half there was a moment in the first half that I, I think I must have been right and used no might have been just after the second uh, just after the, the interval and you burst out laughing and it was Lewis Miller had I um, uh, was leading a counter attack the Hibs uh, the Hearts had lost possession uh, high up the pitch and they had a good uh, a good moment to counter and he just passed it straight to the pitch and I thought that moment probably summed up the quality of the game it was a really poor quality game mm -hmm. but uh, yeah I think you're standing here happy with the point and over kind of looking longer term if you're coming into the week when Neil Critchley got appointed see if you got two wins and a draw from it I think you would I think everyone, uh, everyone, accepted, everyone accepted everyone had taken it it would have changed one of the draws to the, one of the other games I think but they would have they would have taken that yeah yeah but yeah perhaps <laughs> but you, you, yeah it's uh, but I think the kind of the the the, the, the end product you have to be positive about and considering I think I, that's probably something I didn't really um, appreciate when watching it or when, uh, when we're doing our analysis is that it was Hart's third game in eight days mm -hmm. kind of tired legs and you're just like right just, just get through it big positive was the fact that you're looking at the way the team have been responding to uh, situations earlier in the season if uh, Hearts fell 1-0 behind that would have finished 1-0 Hibs or 2-0 Hibs mm -hmm. whereas you look go back to uh, the Ross County game Shankland scored late Dino Wominsk Danda scored late and then today James Wilson scores late and just eking out eking out results I should say like, when I said unbeaten at the start I clearly meant under under the under the new manager <laughs> yeah, we're lost far from <laughs> unbeaten uh, <laughs> yeah. for this season yeah. but yeah so picking up on something that you had said there I mean I'm slightly egotistical so I like it when a manager comes in and repeats something that you've just written in your uh, report yep. and then one of the things I said that Hearts were very good right up until the final third and then they just lacked the final pass invariably almost and to follow on from what you've said I feel like um, Hearts were very good at like I say, getting into areas, getting beyond Hibs. Hibs, after they had been pinned back for the initial uh, period or whatever it was, and they started to get a bit of the ball, like you said, like you were, like, I know you used an example from the second half, but they just really struggled to get the ball into forward areas and to keep the ball into, into forward areas. And it was like, Hearts played quite an aggressive formation to begin with, and it looked like they were just happy to sort of take that risk and know, the, know that Hibs didn't have a huge amount or at least recent history would suggest they've not like got a, a, a lot to hurt you with yeah and I admit I was actually a wee bit more apprehensive when I seen the two lineups I was hoping to see Alan Forrest and I think I do think look in hindsight that was a mistake maybe not starting him and starting Danda, and, uh, Danda instead there was a two, few times when because you said uh, pre the, the preview video with, with Scott you had said that the int he would bring like more intensity and he would kind of fit that fixture yeah. more and while Danda maybe didn't have a bad game there was two or three moments where he was on his heels or he was waiting for the ball to come yes. to him and, yeah. and, that, and it, it, it's not that kind of game yeah yeah I just yeah I think it's I think you can it's a type of game like it's, it's, not, it's not a type of game I, I don't think you can get away with both Spill and Danda playing in the roles uh, mm. in this in the situation we uh, ended up uh, ended up playing but yeah that was that was a disappointment Benny not playing was uh, Benny still being ill was uh, disappointing um, as well. So you kind of did go back to this St Mirren setup, and yeah, it's you're just looking at that first that that f the way we started was it, there was it was sometimes just a wee bit tame and slow. It's like 
dominating possession and some of it was really, really confident the mm-hmm. way they're knocking about mm-hmm. the ball but you just wanted like right Hibs you can tell Hibs are a wee bit edgy just play with a bit more purpose play mm-hmm. with a bit more aggression and kind of ask questions of them because you see if Hart scored in that first 10-15 minutes I think they would have folded yeah. like a deck of cards just just because you felt that uneasiness and mm-hmm. it translated to the, uh, the crowd and it, it then translated back to the players like Triantis was just hacking away the uh, hacking away at the ball when I seen Hibs line up I thought oh Boyle, Boyle he's, uh, is a threat with his pace mm-hmm. Yuan's a threat with his pace and like um, Hoyle and Gale are not, no slouches either but they never really seemed to get much chance just because Hearts had control of the pos- uh, control of possession and control of territory but it just seemed to rather than Hearts just putting their foot down or you know what just, just kind of stepping up went the opposite way and just kind of st- uh, stepped off rather than stepped on yeah, because as we were saying there, I mean, the, the, the follow in from my own point about Hibs not being able to beat, beat Hearts' press as, as well as Hearts were beating Hibs is, ironically, Hibs still created the more clear cut yes. chances throughout the game, including in the first half. They had uh, they had uh, very little of the ball compared to Hearts, but they had the ball cleared off the line. Some of them were saying that was going wide, but still, it was like a heart and mouth moment yeah. for, for Hearts. And then Dwight Gales had two, maybe three headers that he should have, two that he should have done better with. He should have either side of yeah. the keeper, and it's probably a goal, especially that one at the start of the second half. And Hibs actually had a bit of momentum, it took Hearts a wee while to get into the second half. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, the, the Hibs did let Hearts off the uh, uh, kind of off the off the hook. Off, yeah, let them off the hook uh, a, a few times just with how good chances they had. We talked about it in the build-up, Scott and I, about the set pieces. Hibs are Hibs, Hibs have been a threat this season from set pieces mm-hmm. just because they've got a big kind of big squad. Dwight Gill's not the biggest, <laughs> but he was still getting. Uh, we see it with the the goal they scored that they did get um, get joy from that and Hearts. This season half struggled from set pieces. It's been a wee bit better recently. That, but you just know in games like the derby, where set pieces can be so crucial when, mm-hmm. especially in a game where two teams are, um, are, have been so poor. And again, Craig Gordon, we might come on to talk about the the, the goal for Hibs, but he's had to make a. He's, He's not really had. He's not really had to make many saves. He's been the saves have been made for him because of poor finish from Hibs. But on the flip side, Bursic didn't have yeah exactly little to do. And you're thinking this is a keeper who's mm-hmm. really low on confidence. Had a shocker at uh, Tanadice, and mm-hmm. you could see when Hearts did try and put the ball on top of him, he wasn't like he wasn't like really confident with it. He just didn't have the presence of a, a Craig Gordon, but. Just never really tested them enough to get right, enough definitely. shots away or on target. It was disappointing that was from that. Yeah, that was yeah, def- definitely disappointing. I actually was going to come on to the goal next. Very avoidable. Yep. Both of yes. you talked about set pieces being important. Could have probably not even conceded the first uh, the set piece in the first place. I think Gordon kind of has to take a bit of blame as well. I said it at the time before we even watched the replay, but you can see his sort of ball watch as the ball kind of goes to the back post for Eric Pateta to head it. He's getting dragged over there. I don't know if it's just subconscious or whatever, but he's kind of dragged dragged over a bit if he stays where he is he, he pushes that over the bar and it's not a concern but uh, but he's stretching he has to push it onto the bar and then it's anything can happen and it turns into a goal yeah yeah correctly talked about cheap goals we've heard it this season uh, going back to Naismith giving up cheap goals Devlin doesn't really have to make that foul there's two I think there's uh, both him and Penrice I think were in the corner not really the most we're, dangerous area no, of the pitch boil, either no yeah just and they kind of let him squirm free and you can see it and yeah it's just just one of those fouls where at the time you're thinking oh, it doesn't matter you just deal with it and, and move on but then when it actually does cost you it's uh, very frustrating yeah Gordon I think he's he's right to follow the ball obviously right to follow the ball across the goal but I think he takes just I think he takes a step uh, a step forward too much mm-hmm. and then that puts him that, that, that leaves him caught under the ball when it does get a bit of back in and even still I still look at it and think I don't know if he's um, if the way he's twisted he's not able to get a lot of purchase on his mm-hmm. jump because normally I, I just don't think he got off the ground as much as you'd, you'd normally do he was sort of leaning back yeah he was leaning well. back as well so I don't think he could get enough like momentum off the ground uh, to then uh, touch over the bar but yeah it was such a such a sh- uh, sloppy and un- un- Gordon like goal to give away in the derby and then the, the changes started the changes actually started just before the goal uh, Kukarevich was one of the w- one of the changes for uh, for Hibs um, and I don't know it was a wee bit of sort of there was a wee bit of method to it to begin with I guess but like sort of George Grant's slightly unfamiliar role up front 
And then it became a bit of... We felt he was just going for it. We felt he was at yeah. the stage where, where he made the second double substitution where it was just... He would rather lose 2-0 yes. than not go for it at all. Um, and... I don't know about you, but I was kind of... I, I didn't see us... I didn't see Hearts getting back into it, really. And... Um, it was another set piece. It was another set piece that did it. Um, I know we're not really here to talk about uh, the Hibs defending, but David Gray was very disappointed with uh, the way his defence reacted to to that set piece so late in the game. But the story is really James Wilson. I mean, he's already come on, broke his uh, duct, um, got his first goal. That's what a special moment for him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bef- so before before Wilson, just what what you're I saying always about- miss something that he picks no, no, me up on. It was no, no, no. It was, it was more just uh, when you're talking about. I was just I was just wanting to agree with you on that because I turned around and said when the changes were made, it's like this is the feeling of going two 0 hips rather than one one. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, and they should have. We've, we've brushed over that Triana has missed an absolute yes. sitter to make it two 0 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well. And it was when Barry McKay came on. I was like because we were looking around, Devlin and Boateng came off. <laughs> he's like, going to midfield. Gonna, he's gonna sit too. Not Barry McKay again. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out against Rangers a couple of years ago. <laughs> uh, but then. The the, the 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 mix around so sort of, you could understand Spittle and Grant. It made more sense that, when you yeah. saw Grant and Spittle going yeah. there. And then yeah, the goal. Credit to Alan Forrest. I thought he should, like I said, I thought he should have started. But yeah, I think he wins the header in ah, the yeah, boxing. Yeah. And for for Wilson, it's I think it's brilliant movement getting across. He, so we spoke to him afterwards. It's embargoed stuff, so he's not. It's not going out until well Monday night or Tuesday. Um, but one thing he did uh, mention, I don't think I'm breaking confidence, is that he didn't think it was the. It was like he talked about it not being the best goal. I thought it was a really good fit. I'd, like I need yeah, to watch it. He game. wanted. I said I, something like he said I probably wanted it to be a bit better. But yeah, yeah I thought it was like it, was, it wasn't like okay. Like you can talk about the ugliness of the goal that he scored uh, against the Yeah. Yeah, but um, it's like I think it was but a this proper. One, yeah, he's like nipped in. He's like done what? Like it's something like for instance, it's something John Robertson would be proud yes. of. Oh yeah, absolutely. Getting getting on the kind of. Uh, uh, was it blind side? Getting, ac- getting across, yeah, his, getting, yeah, getting exactly. across the defender, and then steering at the corner exactly where you wanted to wanted to go. And the great thing was, like for him, he's a Hearts fan, and if I think he thinks he's a Hearts and Man United fan. Uh, but it was um, <laughs> kids these days. Yeah, uh, but it's like scoring for his boyhood club in front of the Hearts yeah, fans exactly. at Easter Road to get a really important goal. But then it's the fact that. He doesn't savour it. He, d- he doesn't really celebrate. He goes and gets the ball. It's like that's a great attitude to have. Yeah, definitely. Just go get the ball because he was he d- get, get the ball because he uh, wants Hearts to get the winner. Um, Although it wasn't. It was. It was. Um, I mean, there are circumstances where that is valuable, and that's what you want. You want yeah. like, oh, there's enough time here. We can keep going. But I think like as we've been talking about, given the schedule and like all that kind of stuff, game was maybe still there to be won. There was a couple of yeah, chances yeah. and stuff. But I think they were kind of like, right, no, no, we don't need to like. Absolutely, do it. We don't have to like. Um, do you know what I mean? Risk what we've kind of earned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it did. It did feel as soon as soon as Hart scored, as soon as Wilson scored, just because of the nature of the derby, how the mentality aspect of it as well. When you're looking at and. There's a lot of Hibs fans will, will admit that there's Hearts fans coming to the derby with a different mentality than, than than Hibs fans do, or Hearts treat it differently than Hibs do in terms of the seen Hibs fans. It's like the Hearts Hearts treat it as like the World Cup final. <laughs> it should be treated. That's exactly how it should be treated. And it's just that mentality aspect. So when Hearts scored, I did think we, if there was a team that was going to uh, win it, I would say so as well. Was, yes, exactly. And if it has happened before. Absolutely, at yeah. Easter Road, yeah, yeah. Well, Road happened. Um, it's happened at Easter Road. It happened at Time Castle. It happened <laughs> many times. But I did feel that when the seven uh, seven minutes came up, and there was especially between the ninety, I think it was the ninety fifth, ninety seventh minute, I was expecting Hearts to just get a get a scrappy goal from a set right, piece right. and uh, set piece and win it. That wasn't the case. But uh, yeah, it was it was a when you not just a massive goal for Wilson, and not just a massive goal because it's the derby, but a massive goal because if. Hearts didn't score that we'd be talking about a team sitting at the bottom well, of the, the league again, exactly. again and we're kind going of like into a big game not, at the weekend not quite back sorry by Wednesday, uh, Wednesday yeah, yeah. But, and it's not quite back to square one is it but it's just like well, we're, we feel like we've had all this progress but then where does yeah, that leave yeah, us yeah. That, like one result and we're just like back at the bottom again but yeah I was just going to add that to kind of finish off that psychologically it's a great goal and result because it, it keeps the momentum going yes. it keeps the yeah, feel yeah. good going because as I was kind of saying to you after the game there Lucky we didn't get to see it, but it would have been interesting to see what the response would have been to a defeat because we know that there's some people that aren't happy with the appointment or weren't happy with the appointment. If that ever changes, or if yeah. the, I don't know if people are going to look for the first thing to jump on, and it would have been interesting to see if anybody would have used that. But 
it, it's amazing how much just like a, a long throw in a moment like that yeah. can change it all. Uh, yeah, it, absolutely, and it's uh, like you said. Thankfully, we don't have to uh, consider that hypothetical <laughs> of um, of having not having not scored, but it, it, it's. It, it's massive in terms, in terms of just mentality of being able to know that you're not playing well. That's just a good thing. You don't play well, you can still eke out results. And that's that's going to be really important because not only we've got a game on Wednesday where uh, we're against, uh, Koma- uh, against Kilmarnock, then you go and play Saturday, then it's Thursday again, then it's Sunday exactly. against Rangers. And what comes really with this is um, very little time in the training field. So I mean, actually yeah. in the management team deserve a lot of credit for managing to get such a good start with such little time on that. I think they had a few days when he yeah. first came in his first week, but since then it's been rest day, training day, prep yeah, for yeah, the game yeah. basically. It, 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 absolutely, and I I was writing about it when it was one 0 I was writing about um, the fact that Wednesday was a massive, massive game because not only because Hearts were. We'd, we'd, we'd have been three points adrift mm-hmm. and then you win on Wednesday and another team that's low down as well yeah another team that's down but you're not but they're like four points ahead so you're not kind of guaranteed to actually get off mm-hmm. the table if you win on mm-hmm. uh, win on Wednesday so like those two games Kilmarnock and St Johnston be, would become they still are really important because if you look at the schedule it's Rangers Celtic Aberdeen uh, the next three games after those two so it's now getting to the point where we're I think the last couple of games have given everyone enthusiasm, encouragement that it's going to be it still it still could be a really good season, and that Hearts are not going to be involved in a relegation battle. But you still need to start winning games, putting mm. a run together to motor up the table and get away from that danger. And actually, look because for example, Aberdeen are I think what nineteen points ahead. Um, it's just I think third at the moment is looking very unrealistic. But fourth is there for the taking. You know, fourth is still. Um, uh, Acceptable f- finish considering how we started. The rescue didn't got fourth. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah being a v- very very credible. Especially with uh, that looks like they're going to progress in Europe at least to, to another round as well. So oh, I yeah. think all told, if they got into the top six and maybe fourth at the end of the season, I think I think that would be acceptable given how we started. The season. And then hopefully we win the Scottish Cup and deny, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> deny, it, yes. deny Aberdeen, <laughs> deny Aberdeen the European uh, uh, the group stage football. A long, <laughs> long way away uh, that. And uh, just to add to. Finish off and just to kind of add something that Critchley said afterwards as well. We're still very early in this uh, new regime at heart. So, and I think also it's important that I think someone, uh, one of the one of the guys, asked him. I think looking, uh, kind of looking longer term, or looking like looking bigger picture. Sorry, that this is probably a game that will help him Aye. find out. We'll, we'll probably learn a wee bit, a wee bit mm. more about the players and about the team. So, um, I, that's I think that that's that's a positive. Excellent. Well, well, we'll leave it there. I am really needing to get home from my bed. I won't give you <laughs> all the details, but please to make sure to check out everything at heartstandard.co.uk. Please share this. Please like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. All those things really help us. And yeah, we'll see you again soon. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.